So what's up everyone, this is Darren Rose Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you guys some old gameplay footage of my ASG CZ805 friend with a Gate Titan version 3 inside. You'll notice that the trigger response is actually pretty good with no trigger job done to the ASG brand trigger. Later on in the video, you see me keeping my head down a lot, is because I'm actually having a little bit of trouble reloading the Bren quickly, because I don't really see the, ma uh, the M4 magwell, it's because it doesn't even have much of a magwell. It's sort of like an AK magwell, but for a 5.56 mag, which is a little bit strange. Uh, the ASG Bren is also very long, so it's very hard for me to, to hide in barricades like that, so I tend to keep my head down just to avoid BBs. Sorry! Sorry! Uh, I will admit I was abusing the trigger response a little bit. It's because uh, on that day I had both 60 to 70 meter range and trigger response. So I was basically treating the ASG brand like a Sort of like a mini machine gun, I guess. Sort of. I know this is a weird video, this is not a review or anything like that, but it does show you that the uh, Gate Titan version 3, you can use it standalone with no trigger job done to your trigger, and you can still shoot pretty fast. Uh, on that day, I had pre-cocking turned on, and my piston is short stroke by two teeth, which is not by much. Uh, as a side note, the inner barrel is 430 millimeters, so that's the reason why I decided to not short stroke much. Uh, you actually shouldn't short stroke using a barrel that long, but uh, I decided to do it is because the retro arms piston was hitting my spring guide. So that's the reason why I decided to short stroke something that shouldn't be short stroked. Go. You guys may have noticed several times already that I'm sitting down is because the Bren is very difficult to carry uh, and I'm having trouble moving around basically anything. I actually hit my outer barrel uh, on the barricade several times.
I don't I don't see him. Where? He's still behind there. He's still behind. Stop in the face! Yeah. Where is he? He's moving. Whoa, whoa. Oh, hit! So, this will probably be the last time you guys see my ASG CZ805 Bren. Uh, it's because I'm actually selling this rifle in Hong Kong. Uh, this rifle is just simply way too heavy for me. It's way too long. It's because this is actually almost the same length as my VSR-10. So, if I take the rifle right over here, and I put it on the ground, you can see that's actually not too far off. It's it's very close to it. It's about like five inches off. Uh, it, well, it's not very close to the length, but you can see that the that the Bren is very long. So basically, the whole entire time I've been using the Bren, uh, I always hit barricades with the uh, tip of the outer barrel. Uh, very difficult to use, even with the short barrel. The gun is still pretty heavy. So um, like even though these rifles look good, they're just not very practical. Uh, you'll even note that the magazine release is very far from my index finger. I actually have to move my grip like this to access the magazine release. So an easy way that I've found was that if you're using M4 mags, you'll just grab the magazine and use your thumb to hit the ambi mag release. Uh, the only part of the gun that's really useful is the ambi selector. Very, very clicky, very responsive. Right. I actually I actually flip the selector back up by using my right hand is because it feels very nice that way. And uh, another weird ergonomic thing that I found was the stock. You'll notice that right over here it it dips. So an easy way to see it is when you extend the stock fully out. Right? Notice how weird that is. That's very similar to the VC rifles that the that the Czechs use. I'm guessing that's the reason why they do this. What a strange design. And furthermore, the cheek rest that it comes with, can you see? It only favors one side. It's only for like right-handers. Uh, you can flip this around for left-handed shooting, uh, for left-hander, uh, left-handed people. But if I ever want to switch shoulders and like look at my scope, uh, this cheek rest makes it very difficult. And I think everyone shooting the Bren, you will probably want to use a cheek rest because the rail, and if you take the cheek rest off, uh, you, it'll be like here, right? So you want the cheek rest, otherwise this will feel like an AK. Sort of feels like an AK in my opinion, right? Very, what a strange design. Um, I think there's only one super important note that I can tell you guys. If you guys really like the Bren, uh, I think there's only one super useful thing that I can tell you, which is the battery compartment. So I'll. Uh, First of all, let me clarify something. The battery compartment is over here. It's very small, very cramped, very limited. And even if you match stuff a battery in there, the wires are all over the place. Um, so you have to shorten your wires. I think that's an absolute. I think you have to do that. But another thing that you can do uh, to make the battery fit a little bit better is by cutting the dust cover. So the dust cover over here. Can you see where my hand is? There's a bit of there's a large daylight going through through here. I cut the steel dust cover so I can put a very long lipo battery in here. Uh, I think that's one of the modifications that it makes the gun look a little bit weird because there's a bit of daylight over here. But you can use a significantly bigger battery. Uh, fitting an 11.1 lipo in here is now very easy um, if you do the simple modification uh, because you can stuff it all the way in. You can have your wires. Uh, tucked over here without worrying without having to worry about your stock pinching the wires 
So this gives you a lot of extra space to work with. Uh, I think that's the biggest tip I can give you about the brand. Uh, otherwise, everything, believe it or not, um, everything is just like a standard version 3 gearbox because this is a version 3 gearbox, just like any other any other AK. So just do whatever modifications that you normally do, like, uh, like in terms of your parts. Uh, the only parts that are weird is your nozzle, which is obvious because this is a brand. Uh, and this uses a special hop-up unit, so the nozzle is proprietary. Uh, you can buy aftermarket nozzles from from uh, from Czech Republic, believe it or not. Uh, there is actually companies out there making brand nozzles for this uh, with an O-ring. Uh, you can buy that later on if you want. Uh, I don't think you have to, but if you are tuning your gun, you might want to. Uh, or if you break your stock nozzle. Uh, the, the, the brand nozzle was very long. It's like it, the, the brand nozzle was actually so long that it almost looks like a Tokyo Murray recall shock nozzle. It's exceptionally long. Uh, and the last proprietary part is the trigger. So you would think, why the hell would the trigger be proprietary? Is because this is a version 3 gearbox. Uh, I do have a Gate Titan version 3 in here. So the reason why the trigger is proprietary is because of the ambi safety. Uh, the ambi safety, there is a cog that goes inside here, that goes through the trigger. And an AK trigger doesn't have that area for that cog. So, the trigger for the ASG Bren, as far as I can tell, is proprietary. So you can't use tunable triggers. Uh, it's very difficult for you to modify this and shorten the take up. Notice how much take up there is. But you can still pull the trigger quite fast because the gate tighten helps out with that a lot. But nevertheless, this trigger is more or less proprietary because of the of the cog. If you don't use the cog, um, then your then you will lose your ambi safety. And the ambi safety, believe you me, is very useful. Um, if you actually shoot with your, uh, if you actually have your rifle on standby, you can just flip it on safety very quickly with your thumb, and flip it back on safe with your other hand. Uh, this is the nicest safety that I've ever used. Absolutely love it. It reminds me of like a, something that you see on MP5 or G36. It reminds me of that. That's very, very cool. I wish they took the time to like add a three round burst. So you can have like more selector options. That would, but that would have been pretty cool. I would have paid more money for that. But uh, for now, that's basically it. Otherwise, there's really nothing else special to note about the brand. Uh, if, if you guys really want the brand, I think just... Just think of this as a version 3 gearbox with a nice shell. Uh, just think of it that way because that's basically what this is. So you don't really need a video review of the brand because uh, uh, the, the brand is just exactly as I say it is. Version 3 gearbox with with a nice shell with, one, uh, with two proprietary parts, the nozzle and the trigger. That's basically it. So, yeah. Anyways guys, that's it for the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit. I hope you guys found something useful. Uh, I know this video is very boring, but uh, I hope some of you guys like it anyways. So uh, peace guys, happy shooting, and uh, thanks for watching.